But did you get much Aggie in that shop? Because I can imagine that you had you had a lot of colourful oh. characters coming in and you get a lot of like yeah I'd say I'm gonna call them screamers. So yeah. when I say screamers, I mean I think it was the one of the first Richard Mills I actually bought. I lost a lot of money, a hell of a lot of money. You basically got up. a front room. You basically <laughs> got a front room with a couple of counters. Yeah, That's, it's true. And if you if you if you say that to most businessmen, they'd be like, what? Yeah, yeah. What you? I don't want people coming in, sitting down with their feet up, playing FIFA, and it was a risk. Drinking champagne, it and was a risk. How like paranoid really do you get? On a scale of ten, I'll definitely say around nine because. Mm. I Is it the horse that goes? Is it an L, L shape or something? No, nope. I'm done then. I'm done. Won't play you for uh, no money or learn. Right. So, obviously, first of all, thanks for coming, Judd. You're welcome. So, most of you will know Judd from Trotters, and if you don't know Judd, you should do. So, Judd is obviously the man behind Trotters. They've now got the penthouse around the corner. It's beautiful. If you haven't been. Um, so yeah, thank you for coming on, mate. Thanks for having me, So I asked you to come on, you said yeah. Um, so I started these videos, I just wanted to give people, like what you're doing with your videos, which I think is great. And if you haven't seen them, jump over to Judge's channel, obviously just go on YouTube, type in Trotters. He does like a day in the lifestyle video um, where it just shows you the dealings and the ups and downs, so it's, which is really, really good. So that'll give you a good understanding of what he's about. Um, but yeah, similar thing, I just wanted to give people an insight into the business. So you're here, got some questions for you. So we'll get started, mate. Let's go ahead. So let's take it from the start. I did, and I presume you did, but what was your early days like? Did you grow up around jewelry the same as me? Was you always in the shop at a young age? And uh, Yeah, I think the same as you, Nico. Like we said prior to this, uh, left school or even during school on the weekends and whatnot, uh, brought into the family environment of, yeah, being part of a jewelry family. So wasn't like it is now. I'd say a lot's changed in the recent years. It was more so a jeweler's as such rather than a watch shop. But um, the, I think the ethics remain the same, you know. Buy and sell, you know, whatever you can sort of thing. Buy low, sell high. Exactly that, yeah, That's yeah. what I heard from a young age anyway. <laughs> it works. If you That's can do it. that right, it does work. That's it, mate. So, so yeah, so did you go, did, did you have any other jobs or was it just straight into the, straight into the jewellery trade? Um, I dabbled my... Dad did try and do a little bit of property as such. So yeah. I tried dabbling with that, but at a young age, that's not the right environment to be in. So I think, especially in our nature of the trade, like ducking and diving, buying and selling, I think it's probably one of the best trades to learn at a young age. And I think that goes throughout life, you know, if you can buy something for less and sell it for more, in any business aspect, it works. And I think in our game, it's the perfect example to learn from, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, I'm I'm like massively grateful for the things it teaches you. You could definitely use this skill set in a lot of other businesses. Agreed. Well, I presume a lot of other businesses are the same, but just, yeah, see, like for me, seeing all the deals from a young age and learning everything you learn, is you can kind of take that module into a lot of things, couldn't you? Yeah, it's like right. an apprenticeship as such. And, you know, we've got the best people to look up to, you know, your dad, your mum or whatever you want to say. And you're looking up to them firsthand and you're there looking at every single deal. You know, don't get me wrong, when you're young, you might be a bit more like, oh, this is boring or whatnot. But it's the best tuition you can ever get at a young age, for, for especially like watching someone like your dad, my dad. They're experts in the trade, you know, and being firsthand to that, I don't think we realise how lucky we was back then to we are now. Man, that's the best education. I remember when I left school, I didn't even know. I, I, I swear to God, I remember being in the shop and I didn't know where a stamp went on, a, on like a letter. <laughs> and I think I asked my dad and he was like, what, are you mad? Yeah. I was like, but they don't teach you about mortgages or where that's a stamp true. goes on a letter or... And that's why I think I got so addicted to the shop because it was like being around people dealing and real world things and seeing like just people coming in and out. And mm. I just thought, wow, this is like, this is this is what it's all about. Do you know what I mean? Or you knew that's what was going to be used for as such. It's you know? a learning curve. I remember yeah. writing my first check and without signing it and sending it to the bank and that was embarrassing. Yeah. You know, I'm a young boy, I write my first check thinking I'm doing like a business deal. And when I found out it got bounced because I never signed it, well, that was very embarrassing. But it's weird. It is actually weird why they don't teach you that stuff, isn't it? It doesn't make sense, you know. In this day and age, you'd think, which side the letter does the stamp go on, you know? There's just 
the real basics they don't teach us in school. And we probably went to school not too far away from each other. No. And, you know, it's obviously something they're not putting out there when their algebra is more important. But yeah. well, we, won't, we, won't, we won't get on a conspiracy theory <laughs> anyway. It might, might be a bit deep for Tuesday night. Um, so, yeah, so obviously you grew up in a shop in Bethnal Green. That's what Trotters is known for. But now, obviously, you've taken over. You're doing the penthouse, um, which is around the corner. So um, what was what was the shop like? Because earlier we was talking and we was talking about shops and what we're doing and what you're doing and how kind of the whole welding industry is changing um what was what was what's your sort of memories from the shop because for me it was like the shop 10 15 years ago and still people now have a lot of good shops but it was a very buzzy environment it was especially around christmas times and oh. people you come in and you'd have all the characters coming in <laughs> but what's like what's some what's some good memories from kind of being in the shop and there, there's definitely a lot of good and a lot of bad so a lot of the good things is like you say, it's the best place to learn. I think for any young male or female who wants to get into a business, a shop will be the first step to learn because you're getting the passing traffic, you're getting every walk-ins from all aspects of life. But I would say as a young boy in a shop that I felt a lot of pressure with in the beginning, I felt tied to the shop. You're there six days a week and there's no there's no time off, you know, there's no lunch break as such. You're there constantly. And I don't know you learn, you got to take the good with the bad. So in times when you don't want to be there and don't want to listen is the most imp important times you do need to be there and listen, whether it's like, it's just experience gaining or learning to talk to different people because as a young boy, you'd get someone who'd come in who'd want to talk to the manager or the boss. And you really need to know how to control that conversation without coming across rude or snotty, especially in the east end of Bethlehem Green. I used to get a lot of characters, still do to this day, but they're the type of people who want to come straight in and be the macho man and talk to the boss. Don't want to talk to the boy or the kid who look, got I don't know, a couple of spots on my chin. You know, they want, to, they want to talk to the real deal. And if you didn't know what you was talking about, you could get brushed off very easily. So mm -hmm. I didn't like that. And I think that pushed me a little bit hard in the beginning to just you know know what i'm talking about exactly and handle that situation but how times have changed yes mate how how many times have we had this conversation about like the shop and the thing but we was like we was we were saying earlier like my dad was saying there's not one thing he misses about the shop but we was also saying that that is probably what's got well not probably definitely that is what's got us our contact book and mm. our experience and yeah all the learnings and building stock and bits and bobs and but yeah it's just um yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely changed now as far as giving us the license to be able to do this and it to be able to work. Yeah. And, you know, and obviously you're smashing it on Instagram. Got oh, over now 300,000 followers. But your new showroom as well. I'm just sitting here now. What a beautiful showroom. And it wouldn't have came easy if you wouldn't have had that established business for all them years. Exactly. So this is not just now. It's years and years yeah. of hard work that's got you here. So, you know, when people go like, oh, I want a nice office like this or I want this, you know, mm. be prepared to put in a lot that's before it. you just get to somewhere like this level. Exactly, mate. No, that's it. No, I just, I just, I just let my dad put in 30 years and I'm just going to try and nudge him out quick. <laughs> that's it. And we're done. <laughs> yeah, it happens. That's it, mate. But um, no, no, it's good. So, so the, so the Bethnal Green shop, did you get, was there much kind of like, did you get much ag in that shop? Because I can imagine that you had, you had a lot of colourful oh. characters coming in and. You get a lot of like, yeah, I'd say, I'm going to call them screamers. So yeah. when I say screamers, I mean problematic people. So you sell them a product, no matter the price, and it's your tied to it for life, which, look, we're there to help. And if we can help, we will. But you don't buy a car of a lifetime warranty. You don't go and buy a house of a lifetime warranty. You know, sometimes things do go wrong. And I think it's up to you and the customers to try and get them problems solved as quickly as possible. But... Sometimes it comes with a price, you know, there's a repair charge, etc. But when you're in the shop and you tend to sell, uh, sell to some of the locals, it might be a £10 repair. But if they're not having a good day and they don't want to hear that £10 repair, then that's where you can clash a little. And I found time and time again, if you had an argument with one customer and you went on to the next one and you had another bad uh, confrontation, you had another argument... You go on to the third customer who might be really nice and friendly, you're going into that one with a problem. And that was my problem. I'd be constantly felt like I was arguing with people and I was going into battle every time I was going to that shop. So I think after spending 12 years there myself, I felt it was definitely the right time to move on. Mm. Mm. Definitely. 
did did you ever have any like major um whatever you want to call them like did you have any like robberies or scares or have, have you had anything like that from like from like now to when you was young like a couple of threats as such but yeah. no serious burglaries because we've always been over precautious in yeah. the security we take you know that's that's my number one priority and we're heavily invested in it then and we're heavily invested in it now so i wouldn't be in this trade if we wasn't 100 percent secure in that as such but it's, you, I don't think you can ever drop your guard in this bit trade. I think you and I have got to be extremely careful, even though like we're on YouTube as such now. You know, out in a public place, you'd never see me wearing a watch, etc., or transporting with goods. But I think times have changed. You know, like the old East End has definitely changed as such, or like the threats. But if you look at the Sun newspaper as such, you see people getting in a lot of trouble for a lot, lot less. So... I think you've got to be, you've got to move on with your life, you know, just go with your day-to-day -day activities. Listen, it's what, it's what comes with it. I think if you've done, if you've done anything and you were successful, like if you was in the restaurant job or you was up to whatever and you're getting money and especially look in our, in our business, you have to be, you have to kind of show it off a little bit. Yeah. Like you're not going to go very far if you don't show your stock, if you don't. And especially now, it's the whole, people love the whole lifestyle thing and you're great at it, you know what I mean? It's the it's the cars and the diamonds and the, and that's what does attract attention on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram. Um, so it's, yeah, it's hard because it's like, you want to be, not like Flash, but you want to show it all off as much as Post because that is what brings attention. It's not how they do it in America, right? Exactly. You're a victim of our own success, but I feel like over in America, people push for it and... They back you, whereas in the UK, I think you're a little bit frowned upon. So it may, who knows, it might be in the next couple of years, things tend to change, but I like nice cars, I like nice watches. So if I see someone with a nice watch, I'd give them a compliment, but that's my style. But other people out there might see you with something nice and go, he doesn't deserve that, therefore I don't like that. You know, so yeah, I do see that quite often, the, the hatred towards us sometimes, but I will. Mate, listen, everything in life is a balance and it's like, you can't have all this and not have some downsides. Yeah. Whether it's like, I don't know, just people being silly, jealous people, people wanting to take what you've got quickly. Yeah. It's, you can't you can't have all that and not and expect to have absolutely nothing from it. I suppose really, if you're getting some of this shit, it's a good sign because yeah, you you've got something people something. want to take, you know? But um, so on that, on that note, do you like, in your like day-to-day -day life, how like paranoid really do you get on a scale of 10, I'll definitely say around nine because mm. I've, I've, to be honest, I've never known any different. I've been brought up in that environment. I've always been in that environment. So, and we're amongst it, you know, on a daily, we're in our group chats and whatnot, you know, you often see other incidents occur and you, it just gives you that alarm bell in your head that don't be naive, you know. We, I, I would live in London myself and I've seen people get, robbed for their phone and wallet you know it's not nothing personal so if they can get away with a watch why not but that's why i take precautions yeah 100 percent. yeah it's like i think it's um especially where we've both been around it and around certain things from like a young age it's, it gets kind of ingrained into you and i can't switch off even if i go on holiday and i've got nothing on me and i purposely <laughs> don't wear a watch or any jewelry or anything you, you feel like someone's out to get you yeah, yeah. And you feel like someone's breathing down your neck and so and then you'll be sitting in someone's company and they'll be like Mate, you're like a nervous wreck. You're like paranoid, but it's like you can't help it. You just you switched on twenty four seven, and yeah. You? Well, even like when you say you go on holiday now, my phone is my network key. Hmm. I'll be honest, if they rob my phone and they rob a large amount of money, I'd rather them rob the money or my my goods, not my phone. Than, than the phone. Because the drama of not having a phone for a couple of days would be more of a headache. Yeah. But that's just the way. Yeah, we generate business nowadays. Yeah. So where you're at now. Like not blowing smoke up your ass, but you're you're pretty much top level as far as like all us independent watch traders. You've got like one of the best or the best kind of Instagram accounts. You're smashing the YouTube stuff. You've got the showroom, which is beautiful. Um, so I'd say where you're at now, I'm not saying you've stopped or you got to where you're going to go because I can tell you're a certain type of person where you're always, no matter where you are, you're always looking for the next thing and the mm. next level up. But how's it been getting there? Would you say it's been hard work would you say it's been up and down has it been like how have you found the journey to getting where you got today um it's 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 happened overnight in my head but it's been a long time coming so i've been in the trade now i think it's 13 years today but 
I've had good and bad times, you know, just because I see on Instagram now that things are good is that not always has it been that smoothly, you know, we, we, I try to push and my team, we try to push as hard as possible for the best results, but don't get me wrong. You know, we all go in sometimes on a Monday and we have a bad day, you know, it's normal. And I think especially the social media side of it now, if I look on YouTube or I go on Instagram, and there's a load of bad comments. I'm like, oh, do you know what? Maybe we are doing the wrong thing. Maybe we, we've changed direction, which we shouldn't have gone down. But, you know, dust yourself down, go back again. You know, it's it might be a bad hour, not a bad day. So we just keep trying and trying. But like, I think if you set the target high enough, you can certainly get to it or near enough. You're not always going to reach it. You're not. If you put in the work, you'll always you'll always going to get close. Hundred percent. As long as you, you know, put in the work. Hundred percent. I I never imagined I'd be in the position I am now, five years ago, but I think just keep your head down, keep your feet on the floor. You know, remain humble. There's a lot of people out there who get instant success and it goes to their head and they they don't know how to handle it and they crash. So I'm not looking to be in it for the short term. I want to be in the long term, and hope to like you know do what your dad done, what my dad done, and sort of build a legacy stronger than what they gave us the opportunity with. Mate, that's like, that. yeah, but that's that's going back to the shop days. Like, I think being around the shop mentality of like, would, would, would have both been in there. You're doing five, six days a week. Mm -hmm. You're doing, oh, not like crazy stockbroker hours, but you're doing fair hours. Yeah. Um, you're taking risks, you're... There's ups, there's downs, but it's kind of you're consistently working. And some days you might not have been on film and you're sitting on your phone. And other days you're doing 100 deals, you know. But yeah. I think that kind of ingrains in you. That, like you learn like, okay, there's not like just one day where it's a key and you earn loads of money. It's the accumulation <laughs> of like you buy something, you have a touch, you, you stick it away in the shop and then another day's crap, another day's good. But you add all those days up over the year and you get forward a little bit. And I think kind of you learn that it's not like just one thing or one it's just a consistent yeah just doing the right things but consistently you know what i mean but i feel like sometimes the mistakes i made years ago have worked in my favor nowadays so for example i think it's the one of the first richard mills i actually bought i lost a lot of money a hell of a lot of money because how, what, how? I, I was naive i never knew which model was hot and what wasn't and what, i ended what, up what just paid too much paid way too much and I trusted the elders in the trade at the time. And I was like, oh, okay, is this a good watch? So it was like, yeah, yeah, it's a good watch. You're going to earn loads of money, blah, blah. Well, I couldn't sell the watch for like two years. And at the time, it was a hell of a big watch for me to have in stock at the time. And I got crashed out. I mean, I lost a lot of money. But nowadays, I know where to be on them. So if I wouldn't have dabbled in that market then, I probably wouldn't be in the market now. But it never scared me too much. I went back into it at a later date. And just made sure this time I definitely knew what I was talking about. You know, I definitely knew what product I was buying this time. Make mistakes. You learn that you learn the most you're ever going to learn from from mistakes. Mm -hmm. And when like you make a mistake like that and you lose some money, like someone so, someone to say that to you, like someone holding you, think, mate, do me a favour. <laughs> like really, like how like would you feel if you lost X? You know what I mean? But yeah. but it's true. Like you can if you if you if you, say you would have made what you lost from the RM, you probably would have forgot about it in yeah, a few months, so you didn't. wouldn't have learned nothing. But Maybe after that, everything you was checking, maybe you might be going online, checking the price, thinking about who you're dealing with. And yeah. maybe that was like, I think not everything happens for a reason, but because some weird stuff happens, but things do happen for a reason or everything's kind of, there's a bit of a theory behind it. And maybe that was worth what happened in future. Well, and you've kind of made up, you know? If every product you ever bought from day one, you earned money, it'd be too easy, you yeah. know? So you need to know what's hot and what's not, you know? Some things work, some things don't. The setbacks and everything, that's what builds character. and 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. So talking about setbacks, because um, we're going to have all different types of people kind of watching this, what, for people that are starting out or maybe in the game and are finding it difficult or doing whatever they're doing, what setbacks have you had through your journey making it to where you're at now and how have you doubted yourself? Because mm. you've obviously, whatever's happened or whatever you're going to say, you've obviously overcome all that. Yeah. You know? And that's really a minor to where you're at now. So what what kind of setbacks have you had or what, or, or how have you ever doubted yourself? I, I wouldn't as such call it know your lane, but I'd say respect your lane. So for example, a young boy coming up, and you would know this as well, you know, you may think you know a lot, but in what category? So you go to like, oh, watch shows in Germany or such or America, we're small fish again. 
And that was quite good for someone like myself because I was thinking, I'm doing quite well. And I'd go out there and I'd think, I want to be like them or I want to be like him, you know. Then when I get to his level, I'd go, right, now I want to be like them. I never felt like, right, I'm at the top now and that's it. You know, I always aspire to be better and better again. And I You think, always had goals or you was always aiming towards something, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's not to say, I'm not chasing the money as such, but I'm chasing that, like, that, that status, that, um, the name, building that name up as much as I can. And like, it, it makes me proud when I go somewhere now and they go like, oh, I've heard about you or I've heard good things, you know, that's that's nice. That means a lot more to me rather than saying, I want to do business because we're going to earn money as such. But I would say, I'm trying to think how to word it as such. If, if I was coming into the trade now, I would say it's, it's a lot of patience. You know, we're sitting here now, between us, we've done like 20 some 25 years between mm. us as such. Now... Even though we're young, a lot of people only want to put in six months of work and go, oh, I'm out. Well, then you're not going to get the results that me and you have got, mm. you know. So be prepared to put in a lot of work, a lot of hours. I'd say more so hours than work. Mm. Like you said, you could sit in a shop all day, not be physically drained, but mentally drained. Because you've had 30 phone calls of people who have not bought nothing and it's a bit of a downer. But it's the one bite that you do need and you need to be on it. It's weird. I, I can remember days where I sat in the shop and not much happened at all and I'd actually feel drained. Yeah. But here, like, not, not a lot could happen. But it's weird. I don't know. You just feel proactive. You're on the phone. and But maybe that's just the times. I don't know. It's true. I just think, well, especially the, both the, the showrooms we're in now are a lot more luxurious. Yeah. It's places we want to be. Yeah. And that makes me happy every day getting up and knowing I'm going to my nice showroom. Whereas before it was a shop, I had all the front window was filled out with stock, so I had no natural daylight. Didn't even have no fresh air. It was a wear con. So I was just like, right, from eight in the morning till six at night, that was my place. Mm. You know, that was that was where I remained. Mm. So what does, so now you're at where like you are, what does a day in Judd's life look like in the penthouse? What like, what's your kind of operations and what are you doing? And um, I'd definitely say like mornings are my favourite. Uh, we get in, we like to set up, we'd like to like, you know, get the stock out do a bit of a stock take and then it's really responding from the messages from the night before that morning and it's like shipments coming in orders coming in for customers you know for the first hour or two it's more so like yeah coffee and deliveries just going through and getting everything sorted and then we sort of get our, like our first sort of customer walk through the door around i'd say around 11 a.m lunchtime and then before you know it, it's busy you know you just you serve two or three people, you have a few phone calls, and it's three, four o'clock. So the day seems to fly by for me. Do you feel like the day goes faster since yeah. you've been there? Yeah. Literally, like, weeks go by quick as well now, and I don't know if it's getting older or not, but I'm like, oh, it's Friday again, a yeah. couple beers, you know? Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is just, this is flying. But I look forward to a week, I really do, especially a fresh week. I think when it gets to, like, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm looking forward to the deals and stuff we've got going next week just to make sure we're prepared. So you do, I'd say you're like a similar business model, like very, very similar. I suppose you're all quite similar, all quite different, but you're quite similar. But a lot of your stock is slightly different in the way you do a lot of the um, like bust down watches, the APs and stuff, which are super popular at the minute. Um, and obviously like the Cuban chains, is that my phone going off? And obviously the um, diamond Cuban chains and stuff and... I've got loads of friends, obviously, that follow you and that say, oh, yeah, I'm after, like, can you get me a watch? And I say, look, we don't really do the bus and stuff, but obviously you like them because you sell a lot of them and you make money and stuff, but what's your what's your view on them for anyone I know watching this and I don't sell them? Yeah, I'd say if it's really not your cup of tea, then don't buy it, no. you know? We do get... Because everyone people... asks me, they say, oh, does it, like, devalue the watch or does it... I say, obviously it doesn't, it doesn't devalue it because... You're adding in the diamonds and obviously yeah. you're, paying, you're paying for the stones. But Well, for anyone watching now, so anything we sell you guys from our company, we offer you a buyback with agreed terms. So oh, you do after, that, yeah? Yeah, so buyback, if it's yeah. after 12 months, we give you, it might, be the, it might not be the price you like, but it's there in writing. Mm. So if you buy that product, you're essentially like renting it or leasing mm. it for a year or two, then we can write them figures down. So the loss is there in black and white. You can feel a lot more comfortable. But it's not my cup of tea as such. It does excite me working on new projects because when someone comes to us and says, I want this in a certain style of diamonds or whatnot, 
to me, it's more interesting than selling your traditional Rolex Submariner or date just every day. You know, we see that day in, day out for years. But styles change quickly and so does jewelry. And trying to keep up with the newest styles is hard work and it's expensive. So it's definitely not easy, but it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea as well. So even though, yeah, we do a lot of the bust down chains and jewelry, it's maybe a five to 10% of people around England who actually like it. Whereas the other 90% just slate it and don't like it mm. and they frown upon it. So it's a bit of a risky reward. Yeah. You do get your rewards, but it's also a little bit risky. Like we've got an AP we've had set, thought it'd be an easy seller and we've sat on it for probably six, seven months. Mm. Starting to get a little bit nervous with that AP because we've not had much interest in it. What's a what's hot right now in all that? In the bus sound, stuff. it'd be anything below 20k, yeah. and it's usually like a date just 41 mil. Uh, they're flying out at the minute, like the brand new ones with like a Roman numeral on Arabic doll. That just seems to be the perfect price for the perfect product, really. And that, I actually like that one you put on the other day with the, like the multi color yeah. rainbow dial. It's the first one I've seen that. Yeah, that yeah, I actually cool. did look at that and think that's, that's it, quite you know, cool. To me, it's, it's, it's cool and it's just something different. Yeah. It, like, would you see me wearing that on a weekend? Probably not, mm. but I mean, it's just a cool piece and. If it makes someone else happy, then it makes me happy. Yeah. So earlier we was talking just for the camera, we were saying about something Judd bought and he doesn't know whether to hmm. keep it for a bit or sell it. Um and it was kind of getting me thinking. I was gonna ask you whilst we were talking and having a beer before, but I thought I'd save it for the camera. Um so obviously you're fairly young and I don't know like how far forward you think, but what's your do you have like an end goal or exit plan or you just living for trotters for is like next year like light years away or do you actually have an exit plan no so my exit i do have an exit plan yeah i've always for some reason in my head i don't know where and i don't know why i've always dreamed of wearing my dream watch having a coffee having a breakfast outside a little cafe and just enjoying my timepiece you know just sitting there and appreciating it and whether that means me going to change a watch once a week or once a month you know i think especially with me and you, I think we'll always remain in the trade at some point, even if we do decide to retire. I don't think it's a business you could ever walk away from. I've got too much general interest in it. I'm obsessed with it. So it's almost a hobby for me. And like we spoke about earlier, that uh, an AP skeleton that I purchased a number of years ago, it scares me now because I bought that watch for one of my birth. I can't remember what birthday it was now. And I promised myself the following year, if business remained the same, I would open it, wear it, and enjoy it. And I never did because the value shot up so high and it kept going and going. And now it's more of an investment piece to me rather than me taking the stickers off of it and putting it on. So in years to come, I, I would probably like to sit there with my goodies, my watches, and go, like, just enjoy my life. But if it meant trotters needed the funds next year or the year after for something bigger and better, then maybe I'll have to go back to the drawing board. Of course, it's like it's like what I said, it's relative to how bad you need or don't need the yeah. watch, it's, you know. It's business at the end of the day, but it's it's a hobby, but first comes business. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But then you say that, you say like you'd be you'd like to be sitting there with coffee and have a little choice of watches. Like how true is that? Because you could you could really be doing that now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, listen, there's like a lot of people with a ton less and like Look, if you really wanted to, right, maybe not forever, but if you really wanted to for a long time, go and chill out and have a choice of a few watches and drink a coffee, you definitely could. It's true. Do you I know just, what I mean? I don't know what I've got the I've got the idea in my head, but mentally I'm not prepared yet. I'm not there. I'm I'm too young for that yet. I'm not even thirty yet. So I don't know you when know you've got, right. you you know you've got plenty left in the tank and you yeah, want to see it. Yeah, and I haven't I haven't felt I've achieved everything I want to yet. I don't know. I haven't got a certain amount. I haven't got a certain year that I want to say I'm done with at the moment because I don't feel it's anywhere near. But when when you say you haven't achieved everything, do you mean you've got things you've got in your head or you just feel that like you haven't reached your potential? Exactly that. Yeah. I feel like the past 18 months has been very kind to me. Um, it's been very good to us. We've worked hard, but we've enjoyed it as well during lockdown, etc. You know how nice is that to be able to say that? Exactly. You, know? you know, people are out there, and not to put a downer on it, but I've had a good 18 months. You know, I've made it the best I possibly could have with my team, which has been nice. Like you said, you've had a good time mm. as well. Um, but normality is kicking back in. 
now it's time to push on, you know, and it's it's been good, which is nice. It's always springboarded me to this year and I'm looking forward to the next year or two to see how far we can really push it now as a brand. Mm. But it's nice, you know, we're, we're not even like, must be half a mile away from each other and we're friends, not as so much competition. And I think a lot of people out there watching this are quite confused to that. Like, well, how comes like, oh, they're friends, they talk to each other. You know, it just shows that we can be doing the same business with the same clients and still be friends. Yeah. And I think that's quite nice. I think I think that's more of a new age thing though, because it was years ago. I don't know why it's sad really, but it was like anyone else in the job was not like not like competition or but it, I don't know, people just seem to keep away from each other a little bit do you think yeah it, uh, but i think now if you started in this job whether it was jewelry or watches i mean watches especially but you wouldn't survive if you wanted to go on your own you just wouldn't survive like if you said no i don't need to speak to him i don't i don't i don't need to be in that whatsapp group i don't i don't need that supplier i'm going to do my own thing like you would last five minutes so got to network yes, yeah yeah 100 percent like definitely true like your your network has been your net worth like that's that's been true forever but years ago, it was, I don't know, everyone just kept apart a little bit. And maybe maybe it was because your customers was a little bit more loyal or, I don't know. It was... It's true. I just think it's a different time. I think, you know, each their own back then. It was maybe an old school thing, a bit more being proud of yeah. as such. But whereas now, like, especially, it seems to be most of the older generation, like the dads of the situation, and we're like the sons as such. And we're on a bit more of like the social media level. And it's like, yeah, well, I walked down to you or you walked over to us, you know, it's an ab- we're, we're too close not to bump into each other. Yeah. And why make it awkward, you know, yeah. it's an absolute pleasure. But 100%. It's wicked. Um, likewise, mate, likewise. Um, so, yeah, mate, that's li- that's pretty much everything I got wrote down. So unless there's anything else you want to add or... No, well, what's the future for Colby's looking like then? I'll like, be honest with you, at the start of last year, we had no plans to do anything like this. And then... Um, like we got a little place up here, then thought, you know what, this is all right. Mm. And it was probably it was probably seeing what you done, probably planting the seed or I don't know what you want to call it, inspired us or whatever. But it's like everything comes from a fault. Like everything that's ever been brought into existence that has come from a fault, like from like someone's head. And I think it was seeing what you done because I know other people had offices and showrooms and things, but what you done was a lot more kind of of an experience or lifestyle and I'd say you kind of took it probably to the extreme yeah it was you know hard it's a picture but I thought how do you get something more of a uh, customer like experience rather than you've just basically got up. a front room you basically <laughs> got a front room with a couple of counters yeah, that's it's true and if you if you if you say that to most businessmen they'd be like what yeah, yeah. What you? I don't want people coming in, sitting down with their feet up, playing FIFA, and it was a risk. Drinking champagne, it and, was a risk. But for every young fella, the response I got from everyone seeing your page was that looks like a good time. Yeah, and that's what we done in the beginning. And don't, that was, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it was a bit like oh, yeah, too much champagne or whatever. But in the beginning, it was right. More and more people find out about it and quick, and it just sort of caught on fire. But yeah, and I think I, I think that's why you've grown so fast because it was definitely new. Um, it was definitely new. It was exciting, and that was, and like I said, that was the general vibe I got from everyone. It was like, oh, that looks like a good time. Yeah, and yeah. I, I actually heard that line a lot of times, and even if I didn't hear that line, that's kind of what I got from them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, have you seen this? Like, and um, yeah, it's just I feel I just thought it was like really, uh, just a real, real good move. And I was actually just talking in the shop, um, like just over a year ago, and that was like what about if we make some sort of similar, like a lounge type, mm. VIP lounge appointment only, blah, blah. Just as much as because we was kind of done with the shop lifestyle kind of thing. They're like yeah. the same as you. Um, and we talked about doing it in Essex and I was like, no, look, do you know what? Essex is too close. Uh, so what about London? And for us, it was like, co- co- coming up here was like, whoa, like, it, it was crazy. A lot not, to ta- it's a lot to take yeah. in because, like you said, I think it's more so, we were speaking about earlier as well, it's the, the prices of everything, even being up here working is expensive and stuff, but it's, you got to take it on in your stride. And I think you guys, especially have seen as well, like, you know, the clients have got bigger, they've got better. Your original customers will still come and visit you. And I think the they're going to have a better yeah. experience. Or the ones that are worth kind of Yeah, that. but I think when they come up here, I think they'll be, I think they might be quite, we've had a lot of people say like, wow, it's nice to see how far you guys have come. And it is like, you sit with your beautiful view now. And I just think, you can't compare this to where we've come from. You just no, can't. No. So no going back. No. Yeah, so to, to answer your question, Judd, I don't 
don't know. We have we're like terrible. I don't know how you structure your business or what like you do, but we like we're very positive and we're very like we don't have like we don't have big group hugs every morning, but we're very like mindset driven and we're quite yeah. positive and always looking for the next angle. But we don't really have like we're not we're not we're not one for like vision boards and numbers and we don't try and hit targets yeah. and stuff like that, you know. So it's, we don't we don't even really talk about where we're trying to go. Like for us the other day, we had we had like a little bit of a kind of sit round and talked about a couple of ideas, and it was like odd even sitting down and talking about stuff because it's just kind of we just we go with it and. I think if you're all proactive and you've all got a good like you've all got a good way about you and you're positive and mm -hmm. you're a hard worker, you're always gonna go in the right direction anyway. Yeah. Um so being honest, I have no idea what's next. We're up here, we're enjoying ourselves, um, we're seeing kind of where it's taking us, we're gaining a lot of new customers, the old ones are loving it. Um and yeah, mate, just probably probably the same as you. We're trying to build on all of our pillars, the uh, socials and make the stock better and make the business better you know oh, good well i wish you all the best of luck but i know we're going to see each other probably tomorrow or the next day so you know definitely mate definitely well thank you for coming on judd and i know i said at the start of the video but most of you probably do if you don't make sure you go over to judd's page which is just trotters jewelers yeah just trotters jewelers yeah. trotters jewelers on instagram but especially youtube if you're watching this it'll give you like a real insight to a day in the life of what we do you see all the dealings and ups and downs on there um yeah they're blinding to watch but judd thanks um, very much mate thank you nico nice thank you very much you. thank you pleasure mate, thank you